This year I was trying different methods to start cucumbers. In the past years I have progressively gotten better at growing this crop. They are a vegetable I enjoy eating in salads, so having them growing and producing abundantly is always a treat. Of course, as with other vegetables, I had a stash of old seed packets I was trying to use up, so I decided to pre-sprout them using the plate germination method. Since cucumbers prefer to grow on location and never get transplanted, I got my plate of germinated seeds and headed out to my sunny side garden to deposit the seeds directly in the ground. While I could sow the seeds dry directly into the ground, as is traditional, pre-sprouting gives me a bit more control on how soon cucumbers grow. It also gives me assurance that the seed I dropped in the ground is alive. Sometimes you cannot be certain about old seeds stored away for some years. This time, I also wanted to grow some special cucumber seeds I had stashed away. These were seeds I had saved myself from cucumbers grown for a few generations already in my garden. They showed signs of being natural crosses of a few different varieties and had demonstrated some resilience to my climate. This variety of cucumbers grew probably from a spontaneous crossing of seed that I've saved. I think it's uh, a crossing of a white cucumber that I had with a longer green Japanese cucumber and it yielded really nice uh, fruit, large fruit that grew well and showed some disease resistance. So I'm definitely going to be planting it in a special place so I know where it is. And I have here some pots that had sown seed and they didn't grow so I'm going to use that as the starting mix, the same starting mix so I don't lose material. But hopefully this cucumber will grow well and if I can I can continue to select it so it becomes even more and more resistant to the diseases that the cucumber beetles inevitably bring to the garden. These were natural crosses of a few varieties I had planted in previous years. They happened by chance due to pollinators exchanging genetic material between different plants. I saved seed from cucumbers and discovered the specific cross on the following year. I hoped to stabilize it for my microclimate as the years pass. Cucumbers or any member of the cucurbits, including melons, squashes, and pumpkins are known to cross easily. So if you want to keep a specific variety true to seed, you will have to either hand pollinate or make sure there is no other variety of cucurbit flowering at the same time. Since my first sowing of the old seed had proven to be a bit spotty despite pre-germination, I was glad to have some backup seedlings and cups just in case. I suspect that some critter might have gotten to some of the seeds I planted, so it's a good thing that I actually planted some in the cups to wait for the proper time to plant. Now I'm gonna do that. Redundancy in gardening is sometimes the key to resilience. Now I wouldn't recommend actually starting cucumber seeds in any other way other than a big, a larger pot or a cup because they hate transplanting and you want to be as careful as possible. So you have to dig a hole and plant them without doing much to the roots. But I do need to get my my tool, my hori hori tool. I forgot it. The least damage you do to seedlings as you transplant them, the better. All right, now I'm ready. Growing new varieties of cucumbers can be fun. They come in more shapes and colors than we ever see in grocery stores. Creating your own hybrids that are essentially selected for your own microclimate is also a rewarding practice. But here goes a word of caution. There is a caveat with growing wild crosses of cucurbits. Because they are so prone to cross-pollinate, you may get a bitter wild cucurbit crossing with your plant, and that may result in a toxic bitter fruit. So beware of that. If cucumbers or squash taste unusually bitter, do not eat them. As you grow your cucumbers, do pamper them a bit and try to remove unhelpful competition. You gotta be vigilant to weed out, especially these viney plants like the morning glory, the wild morning glory. Otherwise, it'll just take over everything. 
And the best time to do this is when they're small. Afterwards, it's just impossible. They entwine themselves onto everything. And if you have a vining crop like cucumber, that makes it even harder. While not all of the pre-germinated seeds I had sown at first had survived, some had and were showing signs of good health. I was planting these extra seedlings raised in cups as insurance that at least some of the vines could grow. I know it was probably overkill, but from my experience, cucumber can be rather temperamental, sometimes producing profusely to no end, and sometimes dying at the first sign of disease. Coming up in the next block, I explore what happened to the second batch of seeds I planted in the cups, right after this commercial. These cucumbers are what I think the result of the crossing of two cucumbers that happen naturally. And I saved the seeds and I'm about to plant them. This time with all of them together and one of them will be the survivor. All the other ones either I will have to kill or they're gonna die. So let's plant them. As I expected I ended up with way more cucumber seedlings than needed. So I went about the garden trying to plug these in any available sunny space. My strategy was to overplant and hope that some vine positioned just in the right spot could gain strength and produce well. Of course the many extra seedlings would succumb to one thing or another. That is usually what happens in gardening anyways when we are instructed to thin seedlings to desired number and spacing. I usually don't like to thin and prefer to take more control of the seeds I grow. But cucumbers are a bit unreliable, as I remarked previously. At times, they are very sensitive plants, being finicky and dramatic, wasting away overnight. All they need is really a fainting couch and smelling salt to complete the picture. Other times, they just invade everything, growing feet overnight and pumping out a wall of fruit in a few days. So my strategy is to diversify, plant extra and not expect much. More often than not, I am rewarded by this strategy. There is method to the madness. Another thing I planned to do was more of chop and drop, leaving a layer of plant matter always covering the ground to hold on to moisture and increase fertility of the soil. In order to accomplish that, I was making use of any extra plant matter growing around. I was even chopping up the wild grapes and extra Jerusalem artichoke greens to simultaneously clear up space and let sunlight reach the cucumbers as well as protect the young seedlings. Cucumbers like a lot of water but need well-draining soil so pick a sunny place with rich well-draining soil and cover it with a generous layer of mulch. That will block excessive evaporation keeping roots cooler as they prefer having to water much less or not at all. After planting the cucumber seedlings near the arch, there were still several cups that needed to at least get a chance to grow. So I went about the garden trying to find places to put them in. They were not my first choice, but with luck, they would develop and produce something. Having them near the front fence gave them the opportunity to climb and enjoy the sunniest spot if they could compete with the grapevine and other plants. A couple of weeks later, the cucumbers showed promising signs. Even some of the initial seeds sown in place pre-germinated were radiant, showcasing perfect health. Indeed, I could tell that the chop and drop and grass clipping mulch diet was working wonders. Of course, I had to put them in cages to protect them from the groundhog, at least until they grew tall enough to be out of its reach. Some wild morning glories had passed my initial weeding, so I had to keep them in check, otherwise they would outgrow the cucumber. The bean vines also looked radiant, a true sign that the soil was healthy and fertile. I was already foreseeing that a great harvest was to come. Would the cucumbers surprise me or would they disappoint me deeply? Well, you will find out in my next episode. See you then.